You know what, Selena? It's hard enough to build a healthy, long-lasting, lifelong marriage without things poisoning the marriage, without things getting in the way. And yeah, so today we're talking about three P's. Gotta love the alliteration. You gotta have (laughs) P's that will poison your marriage. So I'm excited for this episode. This is actually a resurrected post from how many years ago did we write this? Two years ago. No, it was way... (laughs) Everything's like two years ago in my head. (laughs) No, it was we. I would say it's probably five or more years ago when I wrote I wrote this blog article. Okay. Called blog. Three P's that will. That's when blogs were a thing. <laughs> still got we it. We still write. We still have blog articles if that's your thing. If you want to read. Helpful, man. Um, but yeah, three P's that can poison your marriage, uh, and we'll go ahead and we'll actually share what those P's are. But you're gonna have to stay tuned and follow us to the other side. <laughs> If you're new to Fierce Marriage, I'm Selena Frederick. This is Ryan Frederick. Greetings. We are the voices and faces of Fierce Marriage. And today we are going to talk about the three Ps that can poison your marriage. But before we do that, yeah. Ryan, why don't you lead us off in what we should do before we do that? Well, if you, like I said, Flynn's new, just enjoy the content. We're here to hopefully bless you, to point you to Christ, and to help you have a healthier marriage. If you have been with us for a little while, you've probably heard us say this. Maybe you haven't acted on it yet. So here it is again. Go ahead and like, subscribe, leave a comment uh, to this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast on your platform of choice. Mm -hmm. That's like the first thing you can do to go a little bit deeper with this community. Uh, The second thing is if you if you feel called, if you feel led, this ministry, Fierce Marriage, we also have the parenting side, Fierce Parenting, is completely funded by two things. (laughs) selling books. So if you bought our books, thank you. Uh, And also our Patreon supporters. And those are the people that just say, hey, we care about what you're doing. We Mm want to be a part of it. Even though we can't be in the room with you, we still want to join arms with you, so to speak. Uh, If that is something you feel God is calling you to do, just pray about it. If he continues to call you to do it, go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner. There's all kinds of options there in terms of tiers and how you can Mm -hmm. engage. And I will say this, there's some uh, bonuses to be had oh, for those who would feel so led, uh, but that's not the reason we do it. It's not the yeah. reason we do it. You're all about that uh, that that fierce mission. Fierce mission. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so three P's. I feel very uh, titillated. <laughs> what are these P's? Now I've even I, I since I wrote this blog post years but years back, I actually forgot what the P's are. Oh my! Well, are we just gonna come out of the gate because I think we had a little <clears throat> bit. I think we would do you a disfavor if we didn't kind of lay the groundwork a little yep. bit of why these three Ps are so poisonous to our marriage. So like you said in the beginning, marriage, having a godly marriage, having a marriage in general is hard, right? But I can't imagine doing it without the Lord, the one who created it, purposed it, ordained it. Yep. There's no way we could have a life-filled godly marriage that is generous to those around us and is able to pour out i think if you're just kind of surviving in your own you know that it's hard to give of yourself and your marriage um if it's not centered on christ and it's not actively seeking uh and learning and reading and being in god's word being in the body of christ uh and worshiping him together so we have this propensity mm -hmm. for poison i think is what we have it in the outline here we have what does that even mean okay so you said it's hard but the reason it is yeah. hard to build a, a Christ-centered marriage, to build a healthy marriage, we don't drift naturally toward just being connected. <laughs> Unified and oneness. We don't drift <laughs> naturally toward obeying the spirit as opposed to the flesh, right? Mm-hmm. We tend to want to be more fleshly. We tend to want to be more isolated in our selfishness and in our pride and in our conflict. Mm-hmm. So we have this propensity for poison. And, and where is that even coming from? I think is the first question. Uh, a few scriptures, you'll have heard some of these, but I want to just make sure that they're clear in the, in the top of our mind. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned mm-hmm. and fallen short of the glory of God. Take a second and don't just hear that for a, maybe a cliche verse. It is so foundational. Mm-hmm. All have sinned. We have all actively rebelled against God. Mm-hmm. We are not just the recipients of his wrath because someone else made it so we deserve no we deserve it on our own account so for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god okay if we just hear that part of the message it's pretty sad Mm -hmm. (laughs) like oh great i'm outside of god's good graces there's nothing i can do i've fallen short uh well that's not the end of the story Mm -hmm. another verse though romans 3 10 as it is written none is righteous Mm -hmm. no not one okay so remember 
in the conflict in these areas of your marriage, remember that you could be wrong. <laughs> you could be uh, the one that's the perpetrator in the situation. Um, and so that that's kind of calibrating for us that no one is righteous. No one is perfect. Not even one. Well, there is one. And his name is Jesus Christ. We'll get to that a little bit. John, uh, 1 John 1, 10. Uh, this one is a heart check for us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his mm. word is not in us. Mm-hmm. Many humanists, many who would be more therapeutic deists, right? They think there is a God and he just basically wants me to be a good person, right? That essentially is diminishing our view of God and raising our view of ourselves. And John in this passage is saying, if we say we have not sinned, in other words, if we uh, don't call sin what it is, mm-hmm. then it's not that we're just kind of fooling ourselves. No, it's we are calling him, Christ, God, a liar. Mm-hmm. Would you call God a liar to his face? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. No, no. And here's the other thing is his word is not in us. So it's saying what we're doing, but then it's also saying, here's the reason why you're calling God a liar, because mm-hmm. his word is not in you. Mm-hmm. In other words, you don't have the truth of God. You have something else. Mm-hmm. So if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So we have this propensity, this nature that pulls us into kind of sinful behaviors mm-hmm. and their symptoms of that nature i think this propensity for poison also started in the garden Mm. where you know genesis 3 there's the fall eve eats of the fruit that the enemy you know says oh he starts questioning everything and uh then they start looking within themselves for a place to to hide or to blame or to um be sufficient for themselves like ah the woman the the woman made me do it right is what he says Mm. and they, we start we start uh, elevating either people, things, or whatever it is uh, into this place of like God. We start creating these idols. I think the, the greatest tragedy of sin and of this propensity that we have for poison in our marriage and in our lives is that each one is actually us actively dethroning God in mm-hmm. our lives. That's a scary thing. Yeah. Um, and, and you had said that something about idols. Idol. We're idol factories, so we're constantly trying to erect things that we can worship that make us feel good about ourselves, that justify ourselves when really, like you said at the beginning, we are sinners and we Mm -hmm. are in uh, rebellion towards God until he calls us to repentance and we respond and repent. Like Mm -hmm. we, there's nothing that we can do outside of ourselves, right. To put him where he needs to be. And so, and these things are most obvious when we're being squeezed. Okay. If you're, if you're in a great place, you're not going to, you're going to be doing all the right things because, hey, why wouldn't you if that's, you know, you're in a great right. place and you're feeling pretty healthy. But what happens when we get squeezed? Okay. So that's what, that's when Whatever's our true inside. stuff yeah. really comes out. Right. So when you're squeezed financially, when you're having a hard time, do you run to, to Christ? Do you run to God as your provider or do you run to yourself? And what that looks like is you're hustling harder, you're working longer hours. Yeah, you're compromising, you're, you know, all the things that you had talked about, you know, being home on time to be with your family, commuting to different jobs or going on longer trips to just get that get yeah. that paper. <laughs> yeah, well, and there are nuances there because there is there is a time to kind of put Absolutely. your nose, you know, head down and get work done. But it's where is your heart orientation in that? Mm-hmm. Or when you are struggling with one another uh, in your intimate life and it's not where you hoped it would be mm-hmm. or it's just you're frustrated with it, where do you run in that? Mm-hmm. Men, do you run toward pornography? Do you run toward finding satisfaction elsewhere? Uh, yeah. Or are you running into the arms of God and saying, God, help me in this? Right. And so remember, when we're squeezed, Mm -hmm. that's when our true stuff is shown. What's really in us comes gushing out. And so I think uh, that this is kind of a heart check as we look at these these three P's that could poison our marriage, because each one has to do with what happens in these areas when you're squeezed. So do you want us to go into the three P's? Yeah. The three P's that can poison your marriage uh, real quick are pennies, which we will talk about the financial aspect of your marriage, Uh, perversion, Mm. uh, having to do with intimacy uh, impurity and then pride. Oh, pride, pride, pride. So, how does this first p pennies poison our marriage? What, what well, say you? <laughs> I think that <laughs> oftentimes, you know, you're on social media, you're looking at whatever, and see people on vacation. You just get this envy, right? For and this covetous spirit of, yeah, of course they're you know 
in a cabin up in the woods. Like they, they just, they're so rich. They have all the money. They can do all the fun things in all the different seasons, right? Little and did we you know comparing. that they rented that for half a day <laughs> <laughs> so they could do a photo shoot and go home and edit their photos no. in their studio apartment. No, <laughs> <laughs> but the comparison game is real, yeah. right? It's a misplace of a misplacement of our identity. We start mm. wanting these things that we don't have and we start, you know, strategizing how can we get these things and at what cost? You don't even, we kind of ignore the cost because we want the thing, right? And so again, our identity, thats thats mm. those should be setting off red, red flags for us of, okay, where is our identity lie? Does it lie in the fact that I can do all these fun things and post it on social media? Or does it lie in the fact that Christ died for me and I can live in the confidence and mm. fullness of him and I don't have to be doing all these things that I see to be living in that area? I would, I would even say that it, shows itself off of social media too when you think that if I could just have the thing then I would have the problem that I have solved right the next promotion or the next or just the gadget or the vehicle or the property or the whatever (laughs) the you know a pet or you know whatever that thing is that 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 tension point money would get you and so what happened what happens is is that begins to if you're not in agreement on that and you continually strive towards something without context without mm-hmm. understanding what God says about money yeah. or letting that what what he says bear full weight on your heart yeah that can drive a wedge into your marriage and then right. it's going to it's going to lead to disunity it's mm-hmm. going to lead to argument it's going to lead to a uh, deep kind of despair because you're yeah. you're finding you're trying to find your security in something that was not designed cannot bear it cannot right. bear the weight of the human condition uh, and of course, we have words from Christ Himself that would dispel <laughs> this lie. And right. at Matthew six. Let's, why don't you read Matthew six, uh, starting in verse twenty-five through thirty-one? Uh, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life and what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air; they do not sow or reap or store away mm-hmm. in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the, the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of mm-hmm. these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You have little faith, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? Yeah, we had a time in our marriage where you remember this? We were in, so we're from Washington State. We had moved down to the desert of Southern California, mm-hmm. and we had this apartment, which is an amazing apartment. Yeah, it was within our budget, yeah. and it was. But we we loved it. And I was working as a web developer, freelance, had a brand new like kind of agency, and we were by all definitions of the term, we were living hand to mouth. Mm-hmm. Had no money in the bank. We had all this debt from poor financial decisions, and just kind of we had a history of. I got sick in the hospital. There was a lots of debt there. And I remember sitting out. It was a warm night, and I was sitting out on our deck, and I was just so angry with God. And, you know, right, the audacity. <laughs> I'm just kind of panicking. I picture Michael Scott when he comes in after he realizes that the branch is closing. We are through. It's over. <laughs> All I can do right now is put on a brave face and go out there and be their leader. It's over. We are screwed. Dunder Mifflin Scranton is being shut down. My God. <laughs> no, but it, it was that kind of sense of like, it's over, we're through. And God, in his graciousness, uh, he gave me, uh, I don't know what, what I would call it, but it was it was a loving rebuke. <laughs> I was going to say a slap in the face, but I don't think I'd survive that if God decided to slap me in the face. But it basically said, Ryan, listen, he said, you are not your provider, I am. So it's not your ingenuity it's not your ability to find the next project the next client to to even get them to pay the money that they owe you you are not your provider i'm your provider right just the other day yeah which i was gonna say it's not it it wasn't just like okay god got it done no like that was one of the big stones that was put into place for our marriage and our understanding of god but it is a constant like God's like, all right, I got a medium stone for you now. Same message, different different way you're going to learn it, though. And then, oh, here's another stone. Like, he just keeps yeah. filling us up and sanctifying us through the same message of he is our provider. Yeah. And, I mean, the most, I think, tangible way that we see that is through our finances. You were going to say the, ne- the other well, day. Well, just the other day, we were. I, I was kind of in this place of lament because we're always trying to figure out how to make ministry work online, right? Mm-hmm. It's 
now God has been so gracious to us. I don't want to act like it's just, it's been a huge struggle this whole time. Like God has been gracious. We've been able to provide for our family. Yeah. And I, but I'm always kind of thinking and angling and figure out how can we make this more sustainable because who knows, like they could just take one algor- algorithm change, right. one policy change on social media or one policy change on Amazon or one internet hiccup and all of a sudden like our livelihood's gone. And I thought, how can I make it more sustainable? And I was praying through that and the same loving rebuke came and it was like, he said, Ryan, you, this is sustainable because I sustain you, <laughs> not because you yeah. figured it out. Right. It's sustainable because I make it sustainable. I sustain you. And this was God kind of impressing upon my heart these truths. And so I think that's true for you, whether you're self-employed, whether you, whatever social, socioeconomic class striation you would place yourself in, uh, we, our very lives are sustainable. And in him, we live and breathe Mm -hmm. and move. Like Mm -hmm. it's only through the power of his word that we are, that this universe is even sustained. And we are so quick to think that we have so much agency, Mm -hmm. um, now, we are called to diligence. We right. are called to stewardship. We are called to being uh, fruitful workers, you know, right. and faithful workers, I should say. Uh, but that's from a point of acknowledging who our provider yeah. is and who sustains us uh, no matter what. So, yeah. so that's the first P. First P was pennies. Pennies. And kind of course, paints that picture, right? <laughs> yeah, the first the pennies. P poison. Pennies. All right, the second one is uh, perversion. Now, full disclosure, it does have to do with sex and intimacy but before we go any further i want to actually read what the dictionary defines perversion to be perversion is this it's an alteration of something from its original course meaning or state to a distortion or corruption of what was first intended now let that sink in it's a Mm -hmm. it's a corruption and a distortion of away from what was first intended so now okay think about that in terms of your sex life and how that could become mm-hmm. a poison uh, into your marriage. Now, sex and intimacy are huge parts of marriage. Mm-hmm. Now, that's true, but it's also a very, like it's a very small fraction of the yeah. time yeah. The you spend in marriage. Time spent, the yes. time, yeah, but the impact of it is far-reaching emotionally and spiritually. I think. Right. Yes. I love this thinking about it in these terms as we think about original intent. Is that God created sex? as a physical confirmation of a spiritual truth. Mm -hmm. It's a way to express the nakedness and vulnerability of our souls through our bodies, Mm. right? Remember in Genesis 2, the the two became one flesh. Mm -hmm. That was a consummation of the unity that they were spiritually experiencing Mm -hmm. as a couple. I'm talking about Adam and Eve, of course. It's a confirmation of to express the nakedness and vulnerability of our souls through our bodies. Mm. Okay, so that's the baseline. And we've talked about these kind of perspectives of sex many times. Actually, we have a free course that just went live on our YouTube channel. So go up an episode back and you'll find that. Um, but that's one of the basic yeah. things is that this is not just a physical thing. right? As God defines it, sex is far beyond mm-hmm. just our bodies. It goes all the way into our hearts, our souls, and into our spirits, which, um, yeah. So Right, and we start seeing the perversion of it uh, when selfishness starts to creep in. Hmm. Uh, We start getting a distorted view of what sex is. Um, Obviously, pornography has played a big role in that. Uh, And also, a person's past and sexual abuse, uh, which we don't want to gloss over. And whenever we're talking Mm. about sex and intimacy, we are not uh, trying to, I guess, prescribe anything. Uh, We are not, you know, counselors, psychiatrists, psychologists, whatever. We are not any of those things. We are just kind of sharing what we know not to gloss over, like if you've been sexually abused, then there are going to be some uh, other battles that you'll face in terms of marriage and intimacy uh, with your spouse. However, God is good. He is big and he is incredible. And he is the healer. He is the restorer, the redeemer uh, of any past. And it's very unique, though. I want to jump in because yeah. it's it's the one kind of P that we're going to talk about here where you can experience the poison of it. And you can experience perversion in your marriage without it being your fault. Mm. That's what you're saying, mm-hmm. right? If you came from a, a history of being sexually abused, mm-hmm. that is not without consequence in mm-hmm. your marriage. Right. Now, God is gracious and his word mm-hmm. does heal us. His the, the gospel does heal us. And so, yes, while, while we don't want to gloss over that, like, like Selena said, I also want to say that God is enough to mm-hmm. heal that, that area mm-hmm. in your marriage. Um, there's also the husband or the wife who 
their spouse has been unfaithful to them, right. either through the lust of their eyes or through a physical affair, an emotional affair. Mm-hmm. They've proven in some way unfaithful. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not that spouse's fault if they've been sinned against, right? And so, but they're experiencing this poison, mm-hmm. this perversion in this area. And so to find healing in that, the first step is like we, like we did early on, look at God's design for sex. Mm-hmm. Look at God's vision for intimacy. What are the purposes that it fulfills? Right, right. And how do you find healing out of this, right. out of these areas? I think part of dealing with some of the poison or the hurt that may have happened to you mm-hmm. and is now kind of uh, manifesting itself in your intimate life uh, with your spouse is that we can we can go to the body of Christ. We can go to the pastors. We can go to uh, mm-hmm. Christian counselors, maybe within our church even, um, to help us through these challenges and these battles because they are unique. And there mm-hmm. are some, uh, we can't, yes, God is enough and, and his, his body that he's given, the body of Christ, right, of believers uh, can help us through this. But I don't believe it's something you can go on your own and just be like, all right, God's enough. I can do it. Like, that's just, that's not. Yeah. wise so uh just to put that out there if you're dealing with sexual abuse or anything any sort of distortion within your marriage that is is harmful and addiction with pornography mm. um that would fit in there as well definitely seek help um and i would start with your church uh, yeah. your pastors and your shepherds can't overstate that enough mm-hmm. do not do that do not face any of those battles or pervert, yeah. get help get accountability yeah um and get prayer yeah. and get real pastoral care yeah. is so important. So uh, the first P was pennies. The second P was perversion. Mm-hmm. And now the third P, which is pride, right? It's kind I, of all encapsulating, I is. think, of the first two Ps, but... I mean, we did a video, actually. It's the this one thing that, kills, that can kill a marriage. It's mm-hmm. the great marriage killer, and that's pride. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, go back and watch that video. Uh, but the, 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 the reason pride is so poisonous is because it always elevates the self yeah. above any everything else everything else right and it hardens the heart i think there's mm. it hardens the heart it elevates right. it's it stops you from being soft and i think able to engage with your spouse right. at a at an equal level right again you're elevating yourself you don't want to lose that argument you don't want to be wrong right. you don't want to be the one to apologize cuz clearly right. they're the one that has caused the problem right you don't want to serve one another Right. Or you you set yourself up. Or you don't want to. Sorry, go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) You set yourself up as the most kind of the center of the universe that is your marriage or that is your family. Mm. Um, So I think it's helpful at this point because pride is such a big concept. Let's kind of reel it in, bring it down into real terms. Right. So here are some examples of what pride functionally looks like within a marriage. The first one is being right is Mm. of primary concern over and above showing love. Hmm. Like, because here, here's an example for husbands, and maybe we'll go through this quickly after this. But <laughs> it's possible to be factually correct, but completely wrong in how you love your wife. Yeah. In being correct. Yeah. Right. You can, like. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Listen, there's, the coin has two sides here. <laughs> it does. It does. Uh, and so that's so it's not just about being factually right. It's about loving one another well. And pride would trick us into thinking that it's most important to be factually right because truth mm. is truth, right? Well, yes, truth is no one's saying truth is not truth, <laughs> but we are saying that love sometimes that's why we're called to uh, speak the truth in love. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Oh, it's almost like the Bible has something to say about this. Oh, my goodness. All right. What's the second one? Uh, forgiving is difficult, if not seemingly impossible. So that's a kind of an indicator that pride is. Alive and well in your marriage, if you are not mm. seeking to apologize and owning up whatever your offense is, whatever your responsibility is in the argument, the conflict, whatever it is, mm. uh, if you're not f- asking and seeking forgiveness or uh, giving it, that's or the thing. giving it, yeah, Agreed. because giving someone forgiveness when you feel that sense of self righteousness. Mm-hmm. What is self righteousness if it's not a pride in my own moral standing right. compared to you? So why should I forgive you? You right. hurt me, right? Well, you forgive because he's forgiven us. Of so much but more. But a prideful person would have a hard time recognizing, yeah. acknowledging, and obeying that command. Which third kind of leads one, us to the next one. <laughs> third one is not submitting to leadership inside or outside of the marriage. Mm. 
Uh, I'll just leave that one <laughs> to loom over. Not it. humbling oneself, the next one, to study the Bible or attend church regularly. I think this is a huge, huge, huge one. And I think just in the day and age that we're in, that going to church, I don't know, I feel like we kind of fall to the wayside because of sickness or whatever's mm-hmm. happening, right? Like, oh, kids are sick all the time. I guess we just won't go to church or we're tired or whatever. It's like, no, we need to make an effort. If you're healthy and you're awake and you're just a little tired, get up. We got to go to church. You got to don't forsake the gathering. Mm. And I'm not saying that that just leads you to being prideful, but it definitely is an indicator. I think if you cannot regularly meet and gather with the body of Christ, and you're not seeking to do that, well, because you don't think you need it, right? Like, in, in, it's a net negative to you yeah. if you're filled with pride because you're not there to actually hear the word of God or let it bear its weight on mm-hmm. your everlasting soul. Mm. You're there to be effectually, effectively entertained. Mm-hmm. You're there to be validated in some way. You're there to get from, from people yeah. the relational gratification that you want from having friends or from hearing, you know, for whatever reason. Right. So if you're not going to church regularly, that's an indication that that pride is probably festering in that area of your life. Also <laughs> studying the Bible. It's not about how much you read. It's about how deep you read. And you can read right. deeply into 10 chapters or deeply into even just a word right. in Scripture. Right. Um, but so. pride can definitely, uh, I think, pride can interrupt that. Mm-hmm. Pride can say, ah, I read my Bible yesterday. I'm good. Or I don't, you know, I haven't really mm-hmm. gotten a lot out of Leviticus. I'm good. <laughs> There's stuff in Leviticus, let me tell you. If anything, the Old Testament reveals so many characteristics, the holiness of God, the justness of God. I can't even, like, how do you read the New Testament without reading the Old Testament? I just... So Selena's uh, study on the book of Leviticus is forthcoming. <laughs> yes. The book of Leviticus as it applies to Everybody parenting and marriage. Everybody will buy that, right? <laughs> okay, so those ones are huge ones. So let's go yeah. through these other ones fast. We have a, about 10 more. Uh, another sign that pride is taking root in your marriage is that arguments never resolve. They just sputter out and go underground. Hmm. We used to do wildland firefighting, and fires have an uncanny ability to spread underground through root systems and structures you have to get all the way down to that and root it out and deal with it otherwise it'll continue to spread the next one is this quote unquote why should I apologize if I'm not wrong why should I apologize if I'm not wrong why are you looking at me I don't know I'm saying why should I apologize if I'm not wrong maybe you weren't wrong in your facts of truth maybe but how you presented it yeah, there's more. Because why should you apologize if you're not wrong? There's I'm trying to understand this. more than one way this. to be wrong. <laughs> there it is. It's Speaking truth right there. Strictly clinically, I've never experienced this, <laughs> but I can just tell you that I've read books that talk about He's been wrong these very, mysterious ways that one uh, can many, be Many, many times wrong. has this man been wrong, but I love him. Next one. There, and I will follow him blindly. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. You need to write a book on Leviticus. <laughs> follow me blindly. <laughs> okay, uh, the next big re- big way that you can tell that pride is taking root in your marriage is there is a lack of transparency. Yeah. We read we wrote a whole book on transparency. <laughs> Talk about writing books. We actually wrote a whole book on transparency. It's called See Through Marriage. Uh, check that out if you want to go deeper into the topic of transparency. Uh, this next one is quote unquote, I can handle this by myself. And I think women tend to, at least my observation is that women tend to fall into this more easily if they're just like, mm-hmm. I can handle this. I got it. Like just, you know, they kind of, push the dad to the outskirts and like I'm going to take the kids we're going to do the thing you can kind of come be a part of it because yeah you're the dad but I think we really have to be careful of this as wives and mothers um, mm, to yeah. think that we can just do this on our own because we can't well, we just can't yeah and men if you're dealing with some sort of struggle mm. and th- that goes hand in hand with the lack of transparency if yeah. you think that you can deal with a, a habitual sin without bringing your wife into the equation without bringing brothers in Christ into the equation. Mm -hmm. That's a point of pride. You think that you can handle it alone when scripture expressed expressly tells us to confess our sins to one another and pray for each other, pray for one (laughs) another um, and not to fester in our sin alone Mm -hmm. and figure it doesn't say figure out your sin alone, then come to the gathering. It says, confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So we're confessing to God, confessing to one another. Um, the next one is hearing words without hearing hearts. Mm. I struggle with this a lot because I'll hear you say something and it'll tweak something in my guts. <laughs> my whole is, I'm not, that's not as, at all what I've said. But that's not what you. <laughs> that's what I, those are the words that came out of my mouth. But that's not, but what, that's I meant. not what I meant. <laughs> okay. Uh, this next one, um, selfish financial decisions. What do we know about that? I don't know anything about that. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> well, we didn't pay for it, so it's not really 
financial decision. It doesn't fall under that category. Well, it doesn't cost us anything to own a dog. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Never buy a puppy without informing your husband. No, I'm going to go ahead. Surprising him. I'm going to go ahead and revise what you just said. On his birthday. Never buy a puppy when your husband expressly says, <laughs> "Do not buy us a puppy." <laughs> I think you, yeah, it's okay. I didn't actually buy it, so this is we, where the. We've, regardless of what this looks like we've actually worked it out yeah we did the dog is great he loves charlie but we're gonna get some mileage out of that <laughs> so. as we should thank you lord uh quickness to anger and frustration i love that you pointed that one out for me because that's where i fall for sure uh quickness to anger and frustration just being so prideful uh that i just get angry why can't oh. you guys do why can't you do it the right way why can't you do it the way i want you why are you doing yeah. why are you the way that you are <laughs> Oh, I hate things you choose to be. <laughs> you know, you know. Okay, and then final one that we'll hit today is this this um, inability to acknowledge your own fault in any of these equations or yeah. any of the conversations that you're having or arguments that you're having. Listen, marriage takes two. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you, if you're having marital strife, you're fighting, you're arguing, uh, both of you are going to be at fault in some way. Yeah. And so if you both are eschewing pride or you're avoiding pride, then you will both say, I repent. Forgive me of yeah. my fault in this. Let's work through it together. Let's be reconciled. And here's the thing is pride acts as a wall mm-hmm. that blocks intimacy. Every time, if left unchecked, the poison of pride will leave both of you out in the cold, right? Mm-hmm. It will. You will not be able to come close to warm up, yeah. not literally, but emotionally, <laughs> you know, maybe literally. Yeah. You'll be left out in the cold. You'll be, you'll be left out to, def- to fend for yourself against right. attacks, against hardship, uh, so humility is the is the converse of this, and it is. Uh, it's very disarming. Yes. Um, it it brings down the tension, deflates the self. Right, pride would puff us mm. up, but humility uh, keeps us. I think right where God wants us. Right mm. to remember that we too are sinners. We too are broken. Yeah. We too need the grace and forgiveness and compassion of God. And I think that whenever I've I experienced feeling loved and knowing that I'm loved with Ryan is when I have been wrong and he has graciously like forgiven me and shown mm-hmm. me grace and mercy uh, and still acceptance I think yeah. he, you know we don't approve of the sin there's a difference between approval and acceptance but um, he's accepted me you know and accepted my apology and accepted that I I fall short here and I may fall short here again and we might be at this this mm-hmm. position again where I'm I'm you know apologizing and asking for forgiveness but that's what keeps us connected that's keep what keeps us soft um, because the cycle is going to change and he's going to come to me and how do I respond to that and how mm. God put that in place as a way for us to be sanctified as a way for us to love one yeah. another um, and to submit to one another as as we also submit to Christ so so it's helpful to contrast really yeah. quickly and we, we're going to contrast pride and humility really quick and like we said kind of at the beginning of this third P is that pride is really all encompassing. Mm -hmm. So let's contrast real quickly. Now, and we think about pride, think about your prideful orientation unto God, toward God, Mm -hmm. or your prideful orientation to your spouse or to others as we're going through these. So the first one is this, pride controls where humility relinquishes control. Mm -hmm. Pride is defensive. Humility removes defenses. Pride is a sign of weakness. Humility is a sign of strength really (laughs) like really yeah think about somebody who's a strong leader or a strong personality if if they're really strong they're not going to be telling everybody that they're strong they don't have to shout it they don't have to show it they just are um finally pride prideful people are resistant to god and view others as the problem whereas humble people respond to god Mm. and to others and that we're we're, we're being vulnerable in a way that's actually meaningful toward one another so Three Ps, pennies, perversion, and pride, and they are all poisonous, but we have good news. There is an antidote. There is a cure for this poison, and you probably guessed it. What is that cure? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. <laughs> now, are we saying that you just need to, you know, try try to love Jesus more, see him more closely, and he will just come in and swoop in and fix all your sin all at once and mm-hmm. fix all your problems all at once? Unfortunately, that's not our experience, nor is that seen in Scripture. Mm-hmm. Instead, we see a, a patient, steadfast, long-suffering Christ mm-hmm. who will walk alongside us as a shepherd, yeah. not as a as a uh, you know somebody who's just lording his lordship over us. No, he is Lord, mm-hmm. he is King, but he operates as a shepherd, as somebody who lovingly 
pastures his sheep, yeah. lovingly heals his sheep. And so to converse every one of these P's really quickly, uh, for pennies, Jesus is the antidote in this way. Jesus promises that God will supply all our needs, mm-hmm. right? We read that verse. What's the one for perversion? Uh, Jesus assures us that we are a new creation and our minds will be renewed. We see that in 2 Corinthians mm-hmm. 5.17. Regardless, regardless of our past, yeah. regardless of our current experience, the Lord is faithful to renew our mind. When we're humble, time. yeah, when we're humble yeah. and we repent and we go to him. And then for pride, he's the antidote in this. that He shows us the ultimate example of humility and selfless love on the cross. And the example of that is, is, is in Philippians 2, 8. And being found in human form, mm. he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, mm-hmm. which was a humiliating, painful, excruciating death. Okay, so... Each one of these things are poisonous, and we've had we've had some fun in this episode. But mm-hmm. I don't want that to downplay just how insidious each one of these peas is, and how damaging it will be over time yeah. if not dealt with, if not cured with the antidote. Or you know, we don't we have to take the antidote all the time right. daily. And the antidote, his name is Christ. So if you're at a if you're at a loss where to start, and you find yourself struggling with any one of these things, I think the the best thing we can tell you to do is pray. Yeah is pray. Go humbly before God. Mm-hmm. Ask him to to bring healing in these areas uh, of your marriage. And I think that'll be our couples conversation challenge yeah. is take these three Ps to your spouse. Say, listen, this crazy couple on the internet talked about <laughs> these three Ps uh, that could poison a marriage, pennies, perversion, and pride. Here's what they said. Where can we begin to seek the Lord? Mm-hmm. Which area jumps out at you and how can you seek the Lord in that area? Does that right. sound good? Yeah. All right. With that said, Selene, you want to pray us out? God, thank you for your guidance. Thank you for saving us, for coming to us, Mm -hmm. for putting on flesh uh, that is so uh, finite. Thank you that you came and you died and you modeled humility uh, in a way that we can um, barely come close Mm -hmm. to even trying to be like. And it's all by your grace, Lord. And I pray that you would uh, give couples that are listening or watching just clarity and promptings mm-hmm. to have these conversations uh, honestly and he- humbly and in confidence that you will guide them you will give them clarity and transparency and ability to be honest with one another uh, we praise you and thank you for all that you've given us uh, in your name amen amen all right this episode of the fierce marriage show it's not just a podcast anymore is in the can we'll see you again in about seven days so until then stay fierce